Hello, my friends. Namaste. Welcome back to another Garage Corner Yoga or Corner Garage Yoga, where I teach you yoga in the corner of my garage. Today's class is going to be specially for all of you runners out there who are experiencing some tightness or you just want a nice way to flow and stretch your muscles in a way that is beneficial to your running or any type of athletic performance because Athletic performance uses a lot of legs. Well, most athletic performance does. So we're just gonna jump right on into it. No equipment's really needed today. If you wanna block for modifications, you're more than welcome to use that where you think you need to. As always, make sure you stay safe and you take rests where you need to. We're going to begin at the top of the mat. Begin to tune into your breath. Your feet should come down your mat about a foot's distance away, so I'm a little bit further away from the top. And your toes should be together, heels are slightly apart. Take this time to be aware of the feet. Begin to rock forward and back. Maybe you lift the heels off when you rock forward and maybe you lift your toes when you rock back, really just feeling that center of gravity Sway from left to right. Feel the weight adjust to the different ends and edges of your feet. Now find a good middle, middle ground for that and begin to work your way mentally up to your thighs. Make sure that they are active, kneecaps pulled up and your tailbone is reaching toward the floor. So that means you're engaging the lower belly to scoop the pelvis slightly forward. Begin to roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Following this movement, inhale, up and forward. Exhale, back and down. Inhale, up and forward. Exhale, back and down. Inhale, lift the arms all the way up to the sky. Still long tailbone. Look up at the fingertips. Feel everything pull up as if there's a string pulling your arms up. And exhale, hands by the side. And um, silence your phone if it's not silenced. That's me, I need to silence my phone. Okay, let's go back. Inhale again, arms come up. Exhale, this time right arm falls to the side and creeps down the right thigh as you reach that left arm over, up and over. Look up at the sky and come back up to center. Lift the right arm, now you're gonna lower the left. Walk the left fingertips down the left thigh Still pulling the belly in here, still drawing that right hip down. We're keeping the feet and hips level. Inhale, return the hands back up. And exhale, now we're gonna fold forward, keeping that long spine, long lower back. If you need to bend your knees here, please do. Reach for the floor. I like to start with my legs bent, even though my hamstrings are a bit more open. It's nice to wake up the muscles in this way. Keep that right leg bent as you straighten the left. And straighten the right leg, bend the left leg. I want you to utilize this position as much as possible. Also, if you are not touching the floor, no worries. Maybe fingertips come to the floor, maybe you're just holding your shins here. But really, as you're bending and straightening your knees, make sure that your belly is pulled in and that you're really feeling each um, back muscle, muscles in the back of your leg, elongating, waking up. The slower you feel around and you can wag your tail on each leg as it straightens. The slower you go, the longer and the more you can feel those muscles lengthening. Come back to center, even out the legs here so both are either straight or bent wherever you began. And slowly, slowly start to rise up. 
Stacking vertebrae by vertebrae, pulling the belly in. And exhale once you get to the top. Inhale, you're going to lift that right leg and reach for the foot. Now here, you're gonna make sure that you're not popping all of your weight into the left hip. Instead, you're going to push that hip in and scoop the tailbone underneath. So imagine you're kind of doing like a hip thrust forward, then you can feel more activation in that right hip flexor. Also try to keep your knees as close together as possible and pull that right shoulder back. It wants to pull forward, open up the heart for blessings, for positivity, for recovery. And if you want, you can flip your grip here for more of a quadricep stretch, being aware of that pelvic tilt. Pelvic tilts make a huge difference in quadricep and hip flexor uh, flexibility. You're gonna lift that left leg now, reach for that ankle, come into a quadricep stretch. Make sure to keep that tailbone pushed and curving underneath so you can feel that hip flexor. Some tension might rise up to your shoulders. That's okay, just lower it down. Maybe you flip the grip. Notice your breath throughout all this. And you're gonna exhale, lower that leg. Inhale, arms come up again. And exhale, keeping that spine long, kind of like you're reaching forward with the crown of your head while your hips are pulling back. Come into another forward fold. Inhale, look ahead of you, halfway lift. And exhale, you're gonna step that left foot back so that your right knee comes higher to a 90 degree angle here. Lower the left knee, untuck the toe, walk the fingertips back. So first you're gonna feel this stretch uh, in the hamstrings and more in the inner thighs as you push the chest forward and push the hips down. Really feel the breath here. I like coordinating my um, breath with my stretches because I can tell in my body where it's harder, where my breath starts to shorten. The longer you can stay aware of that breath moving slower and smoothly, the longer your muscles will stretch. You can grab a block here if you need it. But if it's uh, too much for you, you can always walk your hands forward. Retuck that back toe, scoot the knee back a little bit more and begin to straighten that right leg, making sure you're pushing that right hip back. Now we wanna make a 90 degree angle as much as possible right here in your left hip and with your left knee. You can either stay here or lengthen the spine more, pulling the belly in and fold forward, really feeling it in that right hamstring, right inner thigh for a little bit more. Pull back the toes, flex the foot so you can feel the stretch extend all the way down to your calf. Always remember to keep the shoulders loose, relax. Breathe through it. Inhale and shift the hips forward again, coming into that low lunge. This time you're going to plant the hands, push the hips back on an exhale. 
You can stay here or maybe you come a little bit further down. These are some of my favorite running stretches. Inhale and shift the hips back forward. This time, you're going to walk the hands up. Maybe you support yourself by holding your right knee with your hands. Just feel how far your hips can go down. And then put your hands on your hips. So your thumbs are gonna be um, the back of your hips. Fingers are going to hold the front. And imagine your thumb pushing down and forward as you scoop that tailbone underneath using the lower core. You'll start to feel the hip flexor stretch a little bit more. And you don't have to keep your hands there, just like to keep them there for visual guidance. But you want to keep that movement going. So it's not something you can technically see. It's not as drastic as pushing your hips back to forward. It's a very subtle movement but it really starts to pull on some muscles that can hold onto your hips. Exhale and release here. You're gonna walk the foot back a little bit more and come up into a proposal pose. <laughs> so your right knee is going to be um, like at a 90 degree angle. And this time we're really just gonna practice that squeezing of that left glute to really feel that pelvic tilt forward. To make it a little bit more intense, you can push your hips forward. And breathe. You're gonna plant the hands on the floor again and step that foot back down for downward facing dog. Breathe, feel the breath here. Make sure the lower rib cage is pulling in. That tailbone reaches to the sky. Inhale, sweep that left leg up, three-legged dog. And exhale, draw the knee into the chest before stepping it down. Lower that back knee, untuck the toe. Really start to settle into this low lunge again. Feel the difference between the left and the right. Opening up the chest, maybe you keep walking forward so you can find support. Be wary of the back knee, make sure you're not dumping all of your weight into it. You can rest your hand on your knee if you need to. Just really feel that gentle, slow, subtle opening of that left inner thigh. Pulling the shoulders back, you can begin to Push that right knee back just about an inch. Retuck that right toe and push the left heel away from you. So you're gonna straighten that left leg. You could stay up here, even at the hips, feel into each corner, each nook and cranny of this Ardha Hanumanasana or half split. Maybe you walk the fingers forward and stretch down. Inhale, look ahead of you. And exhale, shift the hips forward again. This time you can rise a little bit more. And same thing as last time, you're gonna take the hands, put them on the hips first, make sure that the hips are square. So your right hip is coming up and it's even with the left. Now you're gonna push those thumbs down the bum to encourage this scooping of the pelvis forward. You can rest your hands on your knees if you need to, but just really feeling that stretch 
lower the hip down and still engage that scooping pelvic motion. Very important for the hips and the hip flexors. Exhale, we're gonna straighten that leg one more time because it feels so good. Maybe you walk the fingers forward and you bow all the way down, keeping the hips square. So you're gonna push that left hip back to ensure that you're not pushing anything out of line. Lift the head on an inhale. Now you're gonna bend the knee, but bring the foot a little bit closer. Now we're creating 90 degree angles with both knees. I'm gonna mirror check myself. <laughs> And same motion, the scooping motion as last time, you're just going to do that subtle scoop underneath, really engaging those lower abdominal muscles. So you're contracting here as well as feeling a stretch. This strengthens and lengthens the important muscles and ligaments we need, especially when we're running. Drop the shoulders here if it found any tension. And walk or lower the hands down. Retuck that right leg and come into another downward facing dog. Inhale, the right leg comes up. Bend the right knee. Open up that right hip to the side. Make sure the shoulders are even here. You can ensure that by looking underneath your left armpit. On another inhale, straighten that leg and step that right foot through. Lower the back knee. Now you're gonna bring your right hand to the middle, heel toe that right foot out to the side and open up that right knee to the side as much as you can while keeping your foot in contact with the floor. Pull the belly button in and try to push your chest toward the floor as much as you can. Some people stop here, some people grab a block, and some of you will come all the way down. Feel that inner thigh. If any tension comes into your face, make sure you relax it here, send it away with love. Inhale, come up, and then come up onto the balls of your feet on the left, and you're gonna walk your hands over and pivot to the other side of the mat this time. We're gonna be leading with the left leg. Untuck the right toes. Come up into a low lunge first, and then bring your hands to the inside of that left foot, heel toe that left foot out, and uh, begin to push your left knee out as much as you can without lifting that left foot. Try to keep the belly pulled in here. Continue with that tucking motion of the pelvis. You can stay here or begin to walk yourself forward. Maybe you rest on your elbows. Take one more breath. Inhale, come back up. Now you're going to come up onto the ball of that right leg, right foot, and step it forward to frame the hands. Now what we're going to do is lower the hips down as much as you can. If you need to, you can fold your mat and put it underneath your heels if you have trouble finding the balance. We're going to come into garland pose. So you're going to take your elbows 
You're gonna put them in between your knees here to open up the hips. Try to keep the back long, tailbone heavy. Chest is open and pulling forward like there's a string pulling it up. And breathe. So in this one, you're not really like pushing too hard. You're just really letting your body sink into it. And that's what a lot of yoga is, just allowing the body to move in the way that it needs to and the way that it can and facilitating the energy that it needs. I'm gonna release here. Sink the butt all the way down if you can. And we're gonna come into seated. Now we're gonna go into more seated hip postures. So we'll begin with the legs pointed straight forward. Maybe I should sit this way to make it easier for you to see. The legs pointed straight forward. I'm gonna take the right leg and set it on top of, like right above your knee here. So you don't want it on the kneecap, but in the area right above it. Flex the left foot, open up the chest, and all we're doing is pulling forward. So you wanna keep the shoulders level and even, keep the belly pulled in, lower back long, and we're gonna push forward. There really is no physical goal here, like touch your toes or get your chest all the way to the floor. It's more so to feel the hip opening. So you can use that right elbow to push down that right knee. And just feel the stretch start from the back of the pelvis, lower back and reach all the way to the hip. The more you pull the belly in, the more you pull the shoulders down and push that right knee down with the elbow, the more you'll be able to feel into it. And while you're at it, try to also relax the muscles that are trying very, very hard for you not to stretch. Sometimes we subconsciously keep our muscles tense because they don't know that we're now you're gonna set that right foot on the outside of the left leg. Take that right hand, pull it up all the way to the sky and set it behind you about six inches away from the bum. You're gonna inhale, lift that left arm all the way to the sky and bring that shoulder, or the elbow as much as possible to the outside of that right knee. Just feel the twist here. Twists are very good for our digestive organs. Also very good for the spine, which also plays a role in the tightness of hips. Look over the right shoulder if you can. And come back to center. Now, you're gonna return that ankle back to the area right above the knee. Set the hands back behind you and bring the foot closer to the bum to open up the hips here. So make sure you're not bending into the posture. If you need to set the hands back a little bit more, please do so, but we're trying to keep the shoulders open and pushing forward, keeping the belly in and long spine here. That way you can push that right knee or the right, yeah, the right knee uh, forward and open up that hip. I kind of like this one more opposed to the one laying down. So I feel like this one has more, um, more force to oppose. Bend the elbows and gently come back to straight legs on both sides both legs. Now we're going to inhale, lift the arms up and exhale, fold forward. So we're reaching forward first with our arms, feeling the length in the back and then pull forward with the belly button first and then the chest and then the head comes down. If you need to stay here, up here is the most you can go, then that's the most you can go and that's okay. The body will open up more with more yoga. I'm just gonna be here for a little bit to reset the legs. 
Inhale, come up and place that left ankle on top of the right leg, right above that right knee. Again, with no physical goal here, just going to focus on finding what feels good. So make sure you pull the belly in. You can use that left elbow to push down that left knee gently. I'm not as open on my left hip today, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I can definitely feel a stretch. Stay here for a couple more breaths. Now inhale, lower that left foot down to the floor on the outside of that right leg. Place that right or the left arm on the outside uh, behind you about six inches. Lift that right arm all the way up to the sky. Twist as much as you can with just your abdomen and then lower the elbow. You can stay here, you can hug the leg. Look over the left shoulder to complete the twist all the way throughout the spine. With every inhale, lift up, rise in the spine, lengthen, and every exhale pushes you deeper into the twist. Inhale and unwind gently. Now we're gonna place the foot again, right above the knee. Bring the hands back to prop you up. Bend the right leg, open up the chest, feel the stretch in that left hip. Mm -hmm. This feels so good. Start to lower that foot again. Scoot forward on the mat. Now we're going to lift the arms straight in front of you. And again, with the pelvic movement, pelvis is drawing forward. Now you're gonna round the lower back and lower down as slow as you can. Still with that lower back with your chin almost to your chest. Feel the control of your own body as you come all the way down. How slow can you do it? Now we're laying down. You're gonna bring the heels closer to your bum. We're preparing for bridge pose. Make sure your toes are turned slightly inward, like 10 degrees inward. Fingertips grazing the heels. Activate the glutes first. So you're gonna tighten those butt cheeks. Create that in uh, the forward pelvic motion and start to lift up from the tailbone first into bridge and then lift the rest of the spine. Make sure your chin is reaching toward the ceiling or toward the belly button, but try to open up that neck. So you're gonna press the back of your head into the floor Feel the glutes engaging, strengthening the lower back. You can clasp your fingers behind or underneath you now, and maybe you walk your shoulders closer together. Exhale and lower down. Windshield wipe the knees. Straighten the legs out. On an inhale, you're gonna lift the legs and then lift the hips. We're coming into plow pose or halasana. If your feet do not reach the floor, just use your hands to gently support your lower back. If your feet do reach the floor, maybe you can walk the hands a little bit lower down your back to push your hips forward. 
We're just staying here for a couple more breaths. Make sure that chin is reaching toward the belly button or the ceiling. We're pressing the back of the head into the floor to make room for the heart. Breath is fluid. Relax the face. Slowly release all the way down. Lower the legs. And feel that elongation that we just created in the spine. Set the hands out. Feet or hips distance or wider apart. And just relax here for a couple more minutes in Shavasana. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did enjoy, please share it with your friends, family. Thank yourself for giving yourself this time to stretch and open up and really be here with your body. Namaste. Thank you.